Hi, my name is Nina. I'm 29. I'm based out of Austin, and this is Financial Audit. What do you do for a living in Austin? Uh, my main job, day job, is legal assistant, but I have like three, four other side gigs. Really? Okay, so legal assistant. Well, let's start with that. What do you bring in legal assistant? Uh, after taxes, about 4K a month. Very nice. Okay, cool. So it's relatively comfortable, yeah? Yeah. Happy with that? Yeah. Cool. And you have like four other side hustles, you said? Mm-hmm. Okay. What are they? Walk, walk us through them. Uh, house sitting, dog sitting along with grooming. Uh, so like Rover? Yeah. I used to do Rover, but I got enough repeat clients and word of mouth that I don't use Rover anymore. Oh, cool. They're just like, hey, are you free this day? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, cool. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I get a mini vacation. I get like 200 bucks for like two days. So. Okay. Okay. So, and then uh, content creation, all the social media platforms, as you know. Okay. And then it's not a paid gig, but I clean a cemetery on the weekend. Just. All right. It's fun. Oh, okay. Thrilling. Yes. What are What do you think you bring in on a monthly average? All side hustles combined, not the legal. Not the legal. Um. Let's see. House sitting, dog sitting, content creation, film gigs, probably. Mm, good month, maybe a grand. Bad month, maybe 200. So we'll call it 500? Yeah. 500. Yeah. So we're looking like $4,500 a month now with these side hustles. If they are bringing like $1,000 a month plus your $4,000 post tax, you will have to pay a little bit of extra taxes annually. Are you setting any money aside for those? So yes, I am keeping all the receipts and marking down what is a business expense. Mm-hmm. Which is but are you saving up money on the side for the paying the taxes? Yes and no. Pro- yeah, probably not as much as I should. Well, what do you do? What do you do? Do you do like a percentage or a number? No, I just wait till tax season and then I turbo tax with like that like higher professional and usually whatever I make in tax return is enough to cover it. Cause you, but you do claim all these extra things or you get like a 1099 or anything like that. Yeah, I do claim them. So it's they're just okay. like, oh, how do you Good. get around? I'm like, I Uber, and they're like, that's a business expense. Yes, yeah, sure. So it's like, and that's how you get around everywhere. You Uber? Mm-hmm. I barely it's leave. Expensive. The house. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was like, I only leave the house for my side gigs. So. What do you spend a month in Uber? <laughs> Maybe hundred, two hundred. I don't leave too often. Hundred, two hundred. Yeah. I mean, that could, 100 could be gas if you had a car, but... Yeah. Mm. But then you got to worry about it breaking down, and then car loans, and, and then insurance. Well, car loans, I mean, there's definitely choices there yeah. that would be made, but it's good to know. So how would you, from your standpoint, describe your overall financial situation? Oh, and just a quick note, please consider subscribing as subscribers really help this channel grow, and thank you for everyone who has subscribed so far. Thanks. I would think very good. Very good. Yes. I mean, Ooh. All right. I mean, scientists say once you hit 75K a year, that's peak happiness. Anything you gain beyond that, you're not going to be happier. So I'm making about 70. So I'm like, I'm pretty happy. I'm pretty happy with where I'm at. And your overall finances, you think, are pretty good? Is that what you said? I would I'd say so. Okay. Well, let's find out. We have a checking account. Started with two thousand dollars, ended with basically two thousand dollars, six thousand nine hundred in, six thousand seven uh, eight hundred out. It's a lot of money in, a lot of money out as well. Though there's lots of PayPal transfers. Where are you transferring things, PayPal? So many transfers: two hundred fifty, thirty-two, six seventy-five, thousand dollars, thousand dollars, five forty, seven thirty-one. Yeah. So the thousand most likely to my mother because I'm paying back her because she paid my college. All right, well, let's figure that out. So what are you paying back, and how much, and how long, and what? Uh, it was 80. I only have five left. Oh, thank goodness. And, yeah, so I've been paying her about, like, a grand or two, like, every other month. For how many years? 80 down to five. That's incredible progress. Uh, let's see. I graduated in 2015. I paid off the main government loans 2018. On top of the 80? Yeah. Or- Oh, gosh. Okay. Yeah, yeah the, the whole loan. What did you graduate with? Uh, bachelor's of Science. And from where? So much debt. Full Sales University in Florida. Oh, crap. Yeah, I have one that's like, oh, it's a bachelor's degree in video games. <sighs> yeah, no, don't, don't worry. Like, but there's only $5,000 left out of everything that's your mom. Yeah, just to my mom. I don't owe the government anything. I haven't owed them anything for years. So, you know, mom bank, no interest rate. And she's like, pay when you can. And I'm like, mom, take my money. 
Yeah, you're just getting it over with. Yeah, so I was like... Which I would highly advise. Yeah, I got five mm. left, and I've been pumping, like, a grand or two. Because I'm just like, sweet, we got this raise. I'm going to, you know, finally pay her off and then start setting aside for savings. Okay. And I see you're zelling out money for a dog grooming as well. I thought you groomed. I did groom, but they're my roommate's dogs. And these dogs are very temperamental with their nails. Why are you selling out money for your roommate's dogs? Because they won't do it. And I've been asking them for months to do it. No, that's, that's stupid. It's their dogs. Make them pay for it or don't do it. I know. Or just cut their nails. Oh, I try, but they, they bite. Hmm. So these other transfers out, though, besides the couple thousand, you mm-hmm. know, it's still a lot. Six fifty, thirty-two, hundred twelve, five 112 5 dollars 7 dollars What are we doing? Uh, if it's the larger $100 amounts, that's going to be my mortgage, most likely. And the smaller stuff is probably just going to Okay, so you own a home. I do own a home. Okay, cool. You own a home. So you're a homeowner. Mm-hmm. What was the purchase price of this home? Two seventy three. When did you get it? Right at... We bought it in 2019, so we moved in March 2020. So. We bought it. Yeah, we. Oh, you and a married spouse? No, no, no. Me and a friend with his husband. So you're on a triple mortgage? Technically, it's two. Like, both of us legally on paper should have the house 50-50. But yeah, like, but then but they're legally married, so... Yeah, they're married. Unless they have a prenup. But it's like he Why? Had, Why'd you get a mortgage with a friend? That's so risky. I've been with them for like five years at this point. Oh, five years? Okay. That's still super risky. It's working out great so far. So far, I've had people on the show that got into debt with friends or partners that, you know, weren't married and it has not gone out well. What if something bad happens? Like what? Anything. Any kind of rift in the friendship. That's bad it's risky it's risky it is risky that's why i'm planning to get out of it you're planning to get out of it mm-hmm. okay because it's risky no because i want my own place why'd you guys go into this purchase uh rent was getting higher so where we were living before rent was like 1500 for us and then it went to 1600 then 1800 then it was 2200 and we're like at this point we might as well just get a mortgage because when we did get it mortgage was like back to 1800 so we're like why not just get a house? We want to live here forever. Why not put something that has value in it and where we don't have to, you know, respond to a landlord, be like, hey, landlord, the water here is broken again. Can you come out and fix it? And then they take months to get back to you. So how are you in your mind getting out of this mortgage? What's your plan here? We are going to refinance. And during the refinancing process... Now? Where, where rates are? Not now. We're going to talk about it. Because we looked at it three months ago and they were like, the interest rate right now is like, Awful. And they're like, call us in three to six months. We're like, cool. <laughs> we're going to call. We're going to find out. But during the good interest rate, whenever that does come back, refinancing will take me off, put them back. Could on. be a long time. You're okay with stomaching this risk for a year, two years, three years, yeah. four years? Who knows? We don't even know if it ever will be the, those low interest rates again. That's true. But then again, I could always just move out of Austin and go somewhere else. Yeah, but you'll still be on the mortgage. Well, if I get refinanced, I'm going to be taken off of it, and we're putting his husband on it. So I know, but they're okay with refinancing at a high interest and losing the steal of a rate that you guys probably have? No, I don't think they're going to do it until it's like the same or lower. As? Uh, what's the rate? I think we're 3.7. Okay, what if it doesn't go that low? Hmm. Then you're on this forever? Possibly. That might be something we might have to discuss. And that's why we don't do this that is okay you want your own place you mentioned Mm -hmm. so are you going to get it regardless yes okay when do you want to get your own place as in purchase your own place i'm assuming yeah ideally whenever the refinancing thing happens hopefully within the year i would then take out the equity which would most likely be about 60 and use that as a down payment for a home. So hopefully within a year or two. A year or two. But all that depends on rates. Okay. Yeah. Google Fi. Is that internet or what is Google Fi? It's phone. Phone, okay. Service or the phone? Uh, the phone. So you have that phone financed at $82 a month? No, I just used a lot of data that month. Oh. It's one of those like pay as you is use. Is that... Oh, don't do that. I have unlimited and it's 70 a month. Oh, but I like mine. Sometimes it's only 20 bucks a month. Yeah, and sometimes it's way over. 
Okay. And what are we doing? Alert 360. Security. Home security? Yeah, home security. Okay, that's fine. Wells Fargo Advisors, $1,000 was transferred over? I'm assuming to my uh, credit card. Okay. Pay, paying off the credit card. Okay. Well, let's talk about that credit card then. Do you ever hold balances on your credit card? Yes. Right? Yeah, I have, I have stuff to pay off on that. Okay. So, well, I didn't see any interest charged or fees. Yeah. So, are you in an interest-free period then? I think it's like, because I opened that account when I was under 25 and they have these like weird little special boxes of like, hey, if you do these, you won't be charged an interest rate. Mm -hmm. So I've just been checking those boxes every month. Well, you had a previous balance, 1990 but you paid 2696 mm -hmm. Then you had other credits. I'm assuming you traded some, either some things are returned or these are like the... Uh, the bonuses that come with the rewards that come with the card. Yeah. But new purchase of 2,549, credit limit of 8,500, new balance 2,549. So, and will that whole thing be paid off by next month? Yeah. Okay, so you don't really hold balances then. Okay, gotcha. Now, this is a fun card. This is all, there's really barely any needs in here, <laughs> right? Yeah. We have Steam purchase, and we'll get back to that eBay, Grubhub, a terribly expensive way to get food, Amazon, Delta Air, we're traveling, looks like, to Detroit, and more Delta Air seat fees and steam purchase and blurb.com, Alliance Travel, Escape Hour, Idea Board, PayPal, and Joba Design, and Vimeo. You're paying for Vimeo? For a, whoa, what was this design thing? $1,450. Let me see. Design thing. Yeah, thousand four hundred fifty dollars. PayPal Joe Bud. Oh, that. Uh, that was a monster head for a short film. Monster head. Well, your short film? Yeah, I do a little bit of acting and cast and crew. Well, was it your short film, or were you in it? Yeah. It was yours. Yes. Okay, good. I was gonna say dropping that much money. Did it make any money? No, it hasn't been released yet. Is it going to make money? How much did you spend on this short film? I mean, it made it with friends, so it's like technically free, but not. Is it going to make any money? Or is this just fun for hobby? Fun for hobby. It might make money, but doubtful. It's like maybe a dollar or two. On well, it's a lot of money. And then Set in Brain and Sushi and Escape Room again, Amazon, Grubhub, more, and uh, some makeshift and IMD Pro, Amazon. Twin Liquors, Scotch Beer, Scotch Beer, Amazon, Kickstarter. You're kickstarting something? 196 you gave to a Kickstarter? I like Kickstarter a lot. Well, I guess it depends on your financial situation, whether or not that's bad. And crop up again, that's just bad for anyone because it's just a stupid, expensive way to get food. Patreon memberships, so you're giving out Patreon money and Steam Games and Fiverr and Uber Eats and uh, Grubhub. This Fiverr thing, what did you pay 68.52 for? Uh, video editing services. Okay. Okay. Not a terrible deal. Was it good? Yeah. Okay. Now, something is financed through a firm. What? Through a firm? Yeah, you're paying four firm payments in here. Twenty-seven forty-nine each. Four in the statements. Four firm payments. Oh, a firm. If it's twenty, like twenty-four dollars. Mm-hmm. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Uh, that is probably then. A product that was broken up into four payments with no interest rate. Ugh. Why not just pay for it? You make good money. I do make good money, but I'm like, mm, I'll spread it out. Why not? Cut, well, it enhances risk, but I mean, it's fine. It's not the craziest amount. What, what was it? <sighs> four payments, like a hundred bucks. You're easily dropping hundred bucks all the time, constantly. So I'm confused. It's probably a plushie or an outfit or a game or a toy. Okay. I'm a child with adult money, essentially. Yeah, and we're financing it. So that's what I do not like. You don't have a car. No. Do you need a car? Want a car? Don't really want. Kind of don't need. So you're fine just a couple hundred bucks Ubering a month? Yeah. Okay. I mean, that can add up if it was a busy month, though. It that's my fear. It's volatile. It can, but because it's all business expense, it all comes back. Yeah, but you could do that with cars as well. 
purchase price of a car, write that off. Gas, write that off. Car insurance, write that off. At least you have equity within something that's not as volatile. I mean, gas can go up and down, but not as much as Uber as many times as you need to drive it or take it. That's true. I also just don't like driving. You know, well, okay. Fair. So, all, well, do you ever take public transportation? Uh, where I live, there isn't any. Okay, so you're picking a very expensive way to live. So you owe 5000 to mom. Mm-hmm. Do you have any other debts? No. Besides whatever's on my credit card, no. Savings. What do you have in savings on the side? You're going to use your equity position in the home if you refine. Lots of ifs. We're waiting a lot for that, which I am not the biggest fan of, but whatever. What do you have in savings right now? You're going to get mad at me. <laughs> like 300 Why? I will admit, these last two years, I've just been kind of throwing money left and right at, like, Kickstarters and Friends projects. <sighs> Throw it at yourself first. Why? Why? You don't have an emergency fund. That's terrifying. I do have an emergency fund. You said you have $300 in savings. What do you mean you have an emergency fund? The credit card. I know it's... Sca- That's I, I, not a... Fu- that is not an emergency fund. It's a super just nope, in case. No, it is not. It is not. That's stupid. We don't do that. We don't do that. That's stupid. Okay. Well, I mean, it doesn't make sense because that you have to pay back with interest with the cards you have. Your interest rate on here is probably like 25% variable. Who knows? You can use that to pay for things as long as you pay for it, but you need to have the emergency fund as a baseline level set to even in exist. What is your portion of the mortgage payment a month? I mean, really, you would have to you would have to take care of the whole thing if something bad would happen, but what's your portion of mortgage? 675. Okay. Which is sweet, but so I think 10000 it's okay because your credit card limit is only 9000 I was thinking if it was more expensive, like that wouldn't even be enough to supplement. And, of course, there's extra fees that come with credit cards sometimes, too, if you try to take care of certain things through them. So bad idea. That's not an emergency fund. We want you to at least have ten to $15,000 saved up as a side as a six-month emergency fund, yeah? Yeah, that's what I'm planning to start this year. Just stop all the fun. Well, we're almost in the second month of the year, so it's time to start now. I've been paying off my mom. Well, what is very clear, what is very clear, I'm fine if you don't have a car. I think it's a more volatile way, the way you're doing it, but whatever. You're working from home? Yes. Very cool. There's been no talks of coming back? It's up in the air. It's been up in the air for the last year and a half. Uh, okay. I can say this. If we do go back, my roommate is also my coworker, so I know I'm okay on that front. Well, it just prevents you from house-sitting and all that stuff a little more. Because you can work from those places, right? That's your house set. Don't you do that? I do. Yeah. But here's also the thing. I work the night shift, midnight to 8 a.m. Oh. So I can house it and all that other stuff. There's a midnight shift as a legal something? International law. Oh, okay. You know, it's, it's daytime over there while it's nighttime here. Yeah, sure. So we need to get $20,000 as quick as possible. Mm-hmm. $20,000 as quick as possible, $4,500 pretty much after taxes because it's a little up and down with the side hustles. You know, it's essentially five months. Yeah. But you have your needs to take care of. What I would do for the next six months if I were in your shoes actually do this, I'd pretend like fun does not exist for six months. Six months other than required Uber trips just to the side hustles, things that bring you money. Mm-hmm. We're not doing any more $1,500 masks for shoots for fun yet right now. We're definitely not getting all the sushi and Grubhub and Amazon and all the crazy stuff and traveling. We're not doing that because what we have in six months after spending just a few hundred bucks a month on groceries and then your portion of the mortgage Wait, and utilities and stuff like that. Groceries? Huh? How much do you spend on groceries? How much do I spend? Yeah. I spend like 300 200 <gasps> Well, how much do you spend? Like 70. Well, it's because you go out to eat for every other meal. How many times did I go out to eat last month? Uh, well, I have X's next to maybe about 30 things, 25 things. Oh, that's not all Grubhub. It's not all Grubhub, but you went out to eat a lot as well, not just Grubhub, sushi. So, yeah. Okay. No, no, no. That's great. I mean, keep it keep it at 70. That's fantastic. Keep it as low as possible. What I'm just saying is you can have a few hundred dollars of going to groceries because you're not going out to eat at all. Yeah. And then you have your portion of the mortgage and... Uh, utilities and everything like that and then the ubers that you'll write off because you're only taking the places that make you money Mm -hmm. then besides that i think you save up your emergency fund as quick as possible get to fifteen thousand dollars and you know like four months whatever it takes 
go crazy and then save up another five thousand dollars as quick as possible and just finish off mom pay it off yeah yeah put your emergency fund above that let her know real quick because she's probably used to you giving her a couple thousand bucks be like hey just building up my emergency fund so i can have a base level set for my financial future once i have that i will immediately pay you off as quick as possible i have a plan i'll figure it out so just so you know what the expectations are or for what i'm doing in life yeah so she has expectations I do know for the savings account, once it hits 3000 its interest rate does increase by like f- to 10%, I think. No. It's, I know it's more than 0.5. Yeah, it's definitely not 10% or everyone in the world would be doing that. Because mm. that, that would be incredible. That would match the S&P 500 on average. Pro- I, well, who's it with? Wells Fargo. Uh, I don't know. It's probably not great. Uh, maybe it is. I mean, if it's around three or four percent, that's fine. If not, just put it in a high yield savings anywhere else. Super easy to open. Doesn't matter. Yeah. You can just Google them, and then you'll find a variety of good options. So then, boom, we have emergency fund. And then, boom, mom is paid off probably six months. Then you can start having fun again because you have an emergency fund. You have all this. What I would then suggest: What's your retirement situation right now? Let's talk about investing accounts. What does it look like? Uh, I have a couple of stocks. I have a 401k with my company. Uh, it's not really retirement, but there's a life insurance policy I have. Uh, and then what's in the 401k? How much? A couple of thousand. What's it invested in? I just let auto do its thing. Well, if this is auto, sometimes auto just goes into like us like cash or something like something crappy that doesn't do anything. Mm. Is it in something? Do you know? Is it in like bonds? Is it in stock? Is it in target retirement fund? I don't know specifically, but I feel like it's a nice mix because I was like, give me a mixed portfolio. Oh, oh, okay, good, 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 good. So, okay, with that, it might be something like a target retirement fund. Yeah. Um, okay, cool. That's just a few thousand, two, three. Maybe like three or four because they take three or four. like a little bit out of my paycheck every month, and then you know you have your social security that's taken out as well. And you said you own a couple stocks. What does that even possibly mean? I mean, I use Robinhood and I bought some stocks. That Open up your Robinhood. Yeah, you're going to yell at me. I mainly just do dividends and reinvest the same dividends. Do little penny baby stocks. So we have about $4,000 in here. Oh, this phone is like 10 times heavier than an iPhone. Sorry, it's a pixel. You're certainly beating the market. The average market. Doesn't mean it's not risky going into the future. Yeah. I usually only invest ten dollars a month like this. I'm like, here ten dollars, play with it, you know, these this is your ten dollar like, you know, stock money. So that way I don't go crazy with it. Jeez. Yeah, you're um into a lot of different stocks. Some crypto? Yeah, some crypto. I have it auto invest to like one dollar for each crypto that's on Robinhood. Okay. So I don't like that half of your portfolios and just a bunch of what seems to be random individual stocks. They don't even seem like some of the, you know, larger company stocks. They seem to be a little more risky plays, which is why it hasn't followed the general market trends, mm. which treating you well right now, half of your portfolio being into riskier things doesn't seem right. I'm not going to give advanced advice, but essentially what I do personally is outside of real estate when it comes to market, Typically, I keep more riskier things, each individual less than 5%, but then my overall riskier part of my portfolio less than 25%. Then the rest is just an index funds like the S&P 500 that averages 10% a year, or you could do like a target retirement fund that is aggressive based on your age level or non-aggressive based on your age level or how close you are to that target retirement date or decade, or you could get into some mutual funds. Some have some really good returns. I'm in one that has like 14%, but mutual funds can have some high uh, fees as well, management fees and, uh, you know, fees based on returns as well. Yeah. So there's a lot of things like that. I don't know what your retirement is. All I know, one thing for sure, you're 29. You've missed the best year of your life for compound growth. I'm glad you've at least gotten to $8,000, but we are far, far, far behind for where you need to be to retire. Far. I guess. I don't know. If you were to retire right now, how much a year would you want? Like want or how much I could live off of? How much you want? So pretty much what I make now. So. 70? Yeah. Essentially, in something like the S&P 500 that averages 10% a year, 
what I would be doing if I had $8,000 in my portfolio and I wanted to retire 59 and a half, something like that. And I was 29 right now. And I was, again, investing in something like it's an average of 10% a year return. I would have to be putting in $900 a month to get to $2.2 million by then, which will give you, if you take off 3%, so that it can slightly continue to grow, but at least not lose money before you die, your overall portfolio, right? So you can pass some of it on if you want to, or at least so you don't run out of money. Yeah. It would be $900 a month, 59 and a half. Then you'd have that. But uh uh-oh, inflation happens. So really, what's the real amount of money you need to start contributing that I would need to start contributing were I in the exact same situation in order to retire off of $70,000 a year in today's money, I would need to start putting basically $1,700 a month right now. Okay. Yeah. Which you can do. Uh, you're going to be above 20% investing, but I think you need to to play a little bit of catch up. That's fine. You'll be in a good place. I think th- about 25 to 30% of your post tax, of your take home income, should be invested in some way or another. And then you'll get this house, hopefully within your early 30s. Then with a 30 year fixed rate mortgage on this, your home will be paid off in your early retirement as well, which will help. So you'll have $70,000 paid for home. $70,000 in today's money a year paid for home. I feel like I probably would pay it off earlier than 30 years, though. You can if you want to. Uh, You know, whether or not you should definitely comes down to the interest rate, but that's kind of what things are looking at now. But high priority, we need an emergency fund immediately. Cut back on everything. Your life does not exist for a few months until you have an emergency fund because not having an emergency fund is an emergency. Anything can happen. Especially being in a crazy co-mortgage situation with a friend. Very risky. Very risky. Any kind of debts. Especially a big old hunking debt like that. And then we pay off our mom. And then we just, we we're maxing out the Roth IRA every year. And we're just investing more and more money into brokerages and things like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? What do you think? Final thoughts? It does make sense. Because, I mean, not only is there 401k with work and the Robin Hood, there is the... Uh what is it called? Fundrise, which is investing in real estate stuff. Yeah. It's okay. not, I was like, eh, it's not that great. But mm-hmm. I definitely need to look into like more, you know, investment management. Did you could just talk with an advisor over Fidelity and they're great. Oh, that's, that's where my 401k is. Perfect. Yeah, I've been meaning to open an account with them and be like, hey, I need invest money. Take it. Yeah, it. you get a Roth IRA. Take advantage of time while you have it. Let that money grow itself. If you put an offer another few years, especially another decade, you're going to just have to save so no, such a high percentage of your income that it'll suck yeah. to retire. Start now. For Nina, she is in a financial place where she is almost there to be able to really light her money on fire in a good way and grow it quickly. Gotta pay off mom and really need to have an emergency fund. Also a little risky putting everything on Uber when you're driving everywhere, but either way, uh, and that risky mortgage as well. We're gonna get her in her own place, own mortgage, and we're gonna start investing like a while to catch up and get to a point where she can bring home $70,000 in today's money when she is 59 and a half, and that will be fantastic. So for now, Nina, Hammer Financial Score, feels like a six and a half out of ten make sure to check out all the fun things in the description including my instagram and twitter and don't forget to subscribe thanks